Hello, everybody, and welcome into the Apples and Genos Fantasy Hockey Podcast. My name is Nate Groot Nibbling. I'm the creator of Apples and Genos, originator of the Zero G Draft Strategy. And in this podcast, I'm going to talk about eight players that I think could hit 100 points for the first time in their career in the upcoming 2024 25 season. Let's get it. All right, here we are, eight players who could score 100 points for the first time in their careers this year. I'm excited about this one. I'm going to start off with some uh, kind of gimmies, I guess I'll say. Some guys that I think everybody kind of feels like they're probably going to get 100 points, assuming health, of course. But as we get deeper into this, uh, I think the takes will get spicier and spicier. So stick around for that. I think we'll have some fun with this one. Make sure you comment along. Uh, anybody you think that could make this list for you, anybody you think has a real chance to score 100 points for the the first time in their career this year let's not waste any time let's get straight into it with player number one and for me that player is jack hughes jack hughes this is a little bit of a layup in my opinion you look at what he did last year only played 62 games but scored 74 points in those 62 games that was a 98 point pace he actually scored 99 points in 2022-23, and that was in 78 games played, so that was a 104-point pace. So he's already paced for over 100 points in his career. I really just think all that Jack Hughes needs to do is to stay healthy. My projections for Jack Hughes for this year already reflect that. I've got him, assuming 82 games played, I've got him down for 47 goals, 61 assists, and 108 points. Now... We do have a new bit of a new situation in New Jersey, right? We've got Sheldon Keefe coming there. Obviously, New Jersey did not have the season that they wanted to last year. But I think Sheldon Keefe coming there obviously has had a lot of regular season success in Toronto, really found a way to let the stars in Toronto, you know, kind of shine as bright as possible uh, throughout his tenure there. I think he's going to do the same for Jack Hughes. I don't anticipate, you know, like a drop off from Jack Hughes. I think he's going to get all the minutes the same way he had been before. Don't expect anything to really change in terms of his deployment with the new coach. I think that Jack Hughes is set to crush this year and if he can stay healthy. He's absolutely just going to have a massive year and absolutely crush the 100-point barrier. All right, let's keep rolling. Let's talk player number two. Again, maybe a little bit of a layup, less so than Hughes, but Mitch Marner from the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, definitely a player that you think of as having 100-point potential. He got to 99 in 2022-23, and that was in 80 games played, so that was 101-point pace. Wasn't actually his best point pace of his career. That would be in 2021-22. He had 97 points in 72 games. That was 110-point pace. Last year, it was a 101-point pace in 69 games played, which is pretty nice. He scored 26 goals, 59 assists for 85 points. 101-point pace, as I mentioned there. Upcoming season, I've got him projected for a touch under 100 points, actually. Uh, assuming 82 games played, I've got him for 32 goals, 67 assists, and 99 points. Uh, my, I guess my concern here is Craig Berube coming to town. It's just an unknown. Anytime you've got a coach coming to town, it's an unknown. As I mentioned with Keefe going uh, to the Devils, Keefe was definitely a coach that brought out a lot of the good things about his offensive players, brought out that offense in them, let them play uh, with a lot of uh, offensive flair. And Mitch Marner is definitely a guy who benefits from that. And I wonder if Craig Berube is going to allow that or if he may be installs a bit more of a defensive system emphasizes play away from the puck a little bit more and if that just kind of tamps down the offense just a little bit overall and that's a little bit reflected in my projections here so I do have Marner projected for just under 100 points but definitely I think we can all agree that Mitch Marner one of these guys who definitely has the potential to reach 100 points next season all right next up on the list player number three 
It's Mitch Marner's teammate, William Nylander. Again, probably close to being in the layup category. This is a guy who just scored 98 points in 82 games played. Uh, yeah, 40 goals, 58 assists for those 98. Eight points. This is a guy who keeps himself on the ice. 82 games played this past season, 82 games played the year before that, and 81 games played the year before that. So he's only missed one game across the last three seasons. So he's always going to be available. That's a good uh, thing to have in your in your corner if you're going for 100 points in a single season. And he's kind of linearly increased his points production over the last three years here. In 2021-22, he had 80 points in those 81 games in 2022 23 he went up to 87 in 82 and then obviously last year 98 points stellar season for William Nylander in those 82 games played my projection for him for the upcoming season assuming 82 games played 39 goals 55 assists 94 points uh, so I've got him backing down a little bit from that 98 points from last year Again, Berube, uh, the the looming specter of a coach change. And what does that mean for William Nylander? What does that mean for the Toronto Maple Leafs offense as a whole? It just might take the edge off just enough uh, that, yeah, some of these guys fall back just a little bit. Overall, I think William Nylander probably did run just a little bit hot in terms of the underlying stats, the luck metrics, as I like to call it here. Uh, so I do think that William Nylander could be a guy who comes back down just a little bit on some of the luck metrics, shooting percentage, IPP, those sorts of things that we always talk about here at Apples and Genos. But also, yeah, the unknown of the Craig Berube coaching uh, decision-making, I guess you could say. What is he going to do with the offense, specifically with the even-strength offense? You know, I feel like that power play is pretty locked in in Toronto. They kind of know what that's going to be. Uh, Nylander was heavily featured on the power play last year. Um, definitely one of the bigger elements of his game that really came to light last year and definitely helped him get to that 98 points. So... Uh, I don't anticipate that'll change so much, but it could be a little bit of a tick down at even strength. Um, yeah, I just think that the the median projection here at 94 points, but definitely, you know, it wouldn't surprise anybody to see Nylander have another terrific season, maybe run a little bit hot once again in terms of the luck metrics and uh, finally exceed 100 points for the first time in his career. All right, player number four. This one is where we start to get a little bit more spicy. I'm going with a defenseman. I'm going with Kale McCarr of the Colorado Avalanche. As far as defenseman goes, this is probably the least spicy defenseman that I could take. Uh, McCarr, you know, last year had 90 points in just 77 games played, 21 goals, 69 assists, pretty nice stuff from Kale McCarr. That's a 96-point pace. So he was not far off this 100-point uh, pace last year in those 77 games played. If you go back the couple of years prior, in 2021-22, he had 86 points in 77 games played. That was a 92-point pace. In 2022-23, he scored 66 points in 60 games played. That's a 90-point pace. So definitely, he's a 90-plus point pace player pretty comfortably every single year so really i think you're just looking for one of these years you know he'll just pop the luck metrics will go his way everything will kind of go in even more than it already does and he might finally hit that 100 points in a in a single season my projection for him for 2024 25 has him across 82 games scoring 24 goals 69 assists again nice again and 93 points so yeah an extra seven points is all he needs from my median projection here for him to hit that 100 point season definitely think that that's a real possibility for Kale McCarr on that explosive Colorado Avalanche offense in the upcoming year you know we just saw it this year with Nathan McKinnon there in Colorado had a terrific year um, just really kind of popped off had the you know the positive uh, regression you might say in terms of some of those luck metrics and Kale McCarr could have that year for sure where he just kind of pops off even more than he already does and has that 100 point season kind of feels like Kale McCarr at some point in his career is going to have that 100 point season I think I might even be surprised if he never hits it um, maybe that would be because of injury if not uh, through just a uh, 
pure skill, right? If he never does hit it. But I think at some point in his career, Kale McCarr is going to hit 100 points in a season. And why not this year? The, the, uh, the table is set. I will say for Kiel McCarr, I do think that it's a very real possibility for him to get there as soon as this year. Player number five, going back over to the Eastern Conference, going to the Stanley Cup champion, Florida Panthers. It's not Matt Tuchuk. He's done this already, but it's Alexander Barkov, the captain there. Now, this one might surprise some people. Last year, he had 80 points in 73 games played, 23 goals, 57 assists. That was a 90-point pace, so definitely he's in the realm, but definitely, you know, there's still a bit of a gap to get there, up there to 100 points. Uh, in 2021-22, he had 88 points in 67 games played. That was a 108-point pace. So he's actually paced for over 100 points, well over 100 points in a season before. And in 2022-23, he had uh, 78 in points in 68 games played. That was a 94-point pace. So he's definitely been around it. Uh, actually, this past year was his lowest point pace of the last three years. So I definitely think that Barkov could get himself back up there again. Again, for anybody to hit 100 points, they're going to have to run really hot for the entire year. I think Barkov definitely could do that. He's shown he's capable of that as recently as a couple of seasons ago. And so I think Barkov could be that guy this year. Obviously, things are changing in Florida after the Cup win. You know, some players are moving on. They bring back Sam Reinhart, who obviously Barkov had great chemistry with last year, particularly on the power play. That's obviously going to be a positive for Barkov. I think it really just matters if they're going to use him a ton. Like, uh, the time on ice is a big thing for Barkov. Back in that 108 point pace season he was getting absolutely a boatload of time on ice will he get that again this upcoming season could he get back up there with that plus some positive variance on the luck metrics the ipp maybe a little bit higher than usual if those things kind of come together and coalesce we could definitely see a 100 point pace season for barkov in my mind my projection for him for the upcoming year has him just below the 90 point pace um Across 82 games played, scoring 32 goals, 57 assists for 89 points. Pretty close to what he did this past year, just kind of translating a few more of those assists into goals this year. Um, pretty straightforward stuff, just kind of equalizing uh, some things towards his career averages there. Um, this is mostly due to time on ice. Uh, I do think Barkov, if he gets a little bit more time on ice than I'm projecting, definitely you start to see him creep up to, into those mid-90s as a medium projection. And from there, it's not a far cry to say that he could have uh, uh, one of these seasons where he does run hot and hits that 100-point pace. So Barkov, the guy there, it'll be interesting to see what Florida looks like this year off the cup win. Do they kind of spread things out? Do they reduce time on ice or do they really lean back into their stars here? I think all those options are on the table, but I know that Barkov's going to be around 90 points. And if things break right for him, I do think he can get up to 100 all right, let's keep moving to player number six. We're getting spicier and spicier here, so let's get into it with Connor Bedard of the Chicago Blackhawks. In 2023-24, this is a player who, in his rookie season, played in 68 games, scored 22 goals, 39 assists, 61 points, 74-point pace as a rookie on just a truly terrible Chicago Blackhawks team. Um I, it's it's honestly quite remarkable what Connor Bedard was able to do with how bad that team was last year. So I do think that you know we can kind of expect for some sort of uh, I don't even know if you call it a bounce back, but I do think that you can expect that uh, Mc, our Bedard here could have a kind of McDavid like ascension going into his second season. And then also the Blackhawks get better around him, and that really kind of sets him off, right? That's that's kind of the the trajectory that we're looking for here. In Connor McDavid's first season, he it was cut short due to injury, but he played 45 games, scored 48 points, so he was above the point per game mark, uh, but obviously also had a better support system there. 
uh, in Edmonton. And then the following season, he did score 100 points in 82 games for Edmonton. So I feel like Bedard could be a player who's maybe on that uh, on that uh, trajectory a little bit. The Blackhawks, as I mentioned, they did go out this offseason and they did try to address, <laughs> you know, the lack of depth around Bedard and try to bring something to the table there, try to get him some line mates to play with, some players to bounce pucks off of. And I do think that Bedard, it's uh, it's wheels up next year. I do think that he's going to improve uh, what he did last year. I still think that the overall talent in Chicago is lacking somewhat. And so for my median projection for him across 82 games played, I've got him for 37 goals, 46 assists, 83 points. Uh, so just over a point per game there. But you know, there's some scenarios here you know if he really does connect with Bertuzzi uh, Tyler Bertuzzi as the marquee addition this offseason if Tevu Teravainen comes in and is just a huge boon to the power play as he's been for Carolina in the past um, could he really yeah just help that unit become a lot better and really set up Bedard uh, for a bunch more shots and a bunch more uh, high danger shots and obviously more goals in the end. I think that all of these scenarios are possible for Bedard. Does Bedard just take a bigger step than I'm projecting, right? I'm t projecting him to take a bit of a step this year, but it could be even bigger than I'm projecting uh, in his second full season in the league. That's definitely within the realm of possibility here for Bedard. So I feel really strongly that Bedard is going to be around this point per game mark on the season. And I feel like there's definitely upside beyond this for a guy like Connor Bedard that most players just don't have. I mean, we've been hearing about Connor Bedard since the guy was, what, like 13? And definitely Bedard has uh, does have the pedigree to be a 100-point player in the NHL someday. Is it this season? I don't know. But I definitely would not hold it. Uh, would not be surprised, I guess I should say if Connor Bedard hits the 100-point mark as soon as this season. All right, let's keep rolling to player number seven. We're getting spicier here with this one. This is not a player that I think is on a lot of, play on a lot of people's radars in terms of scoring 100 points, but it's Jesper Bratt of the New Jersey Devils. Uh, when I was doing projections for the Devils, uh, it really struck me just the again uh similar to what i talked about uh with william nylander earlier you got this kind of linear ascension of the player in 2021 22 he scores 73 points in 76 games that's a 79 point pace takes a little bit of a step back uh, 73 in 82 games played in 2022 23 then this last year he scores 83 points in 82 games 27 goals 56 assists and honestly, there's some underlying stats here um, that are just ticking up year after year after year. I really like to see that from a guy like Jesper Bratt. I feel like he hasn't quite hit his ceiling yet. And in terms of that, my projection has him going a little bit higher this season. My median projection for him is 32 goals, 53 assists for 85 points this year. Again, you've got the Sheldon Keefe factor coming to town. Does Sheldon Keefe lean on Jesper Bratt even more than his previous coaches did? Does he recognize that Bratt can be a real engine for this offense that doesn't have to be only the Jack Hughes show? Can Bratt be a little bit more efficient on the power play? Uh, there's just multiple scenarios I see playing out where Jesper Bratt takes the step beyond this medium projection, where things break right for him, where he runs hot in some percentages, and where he could threaten 100 points. Definitely, as we get down to the end of this list, it's going to be harder and harder for these guys to get there. You're going to have to have multiple things break right for them, for them to be able to threaten that 100-point threshold. But I do think that this is a player who it is possible. And I wanted to put it out there because I got a love a lot of love for a guy like Jesper Brett, and I don't think the fantasy community is quite there on him, and I think they should be. I think uh, we should put some respect on this man's name and uh, treat him accordingly for the upcoming season. So Jesper Brett, a low-key pick to threaten 100 points next season. All right, now the last player, player number eight, the last player that I'll touch on in this video here. It's Matt Boldy of the Minnesota Wild. I've been high on this player for a long time. 
I mean, you go back to his rookie season. He comes in in 2021-22. He plays 47 games, scores 39 points for a 68-point pace in that very first season in the league. Follows that up in 2022-23 with 63 points in 81 games played. That's a 64-point pace. And then this past season, he puts up 68 points in 75 games played for a 75-point pace. Uh, 29 goals, 39 assists for 68 points this past year. The underlying stats here with Matt Boldy are just monstrous. So I'm really just trying to see if Boldy is going to be a guy who, uh, you know, just generates a ton of chances, uh, but never quite has the the percentages to really make it pop. Uh, and especially on the power play uh, is one spot where if Boldy could take a step towards being like the guy on the power play, obviously they've got Kirill Kaprizov, so he's probably not going to be the guy, but there are definitely power plays across the league where multiple guys are getting huge uh, point shares, IPPs on the power play. If Boldy can take that next step on the power play specifically and really round out his game there, uh, I really think that he could crush. I have him right now projected uh, across 82 games for 33 goals, 50 assists, 83 points. Obviously ticking up from last year's 75-point pace. I think that with, like I said, some improved work on the power play, which I think is a real possibility for a player of this talent, you see it in the underlying stats at even strength. It feels like it should just be a matter of time before Boldy really puts it all together on the power play as well and starts to be an even more influential member of that power play. It's a great power play, don't get me wrong. It's uh, definitely one of the higher ones across the league in terms of generating chances and dangerous chances at that. So I think that it's running well, but I think Boldy can be a more integral part of that power play and potentially really add, start to add to this projected point total and really start to take off. I also think that in order for him to hit this, he really does need a full season alongside Kaprizov on the top line. Uh, you know, he's been bounced around in the previous season, not this past season, but the one before. He was really on the second line the whole season. Then this last season, you know, he kind of split time on the Kaprizov line and on the second line. You know, maybe there's some other players there in Minnesota. You got Marco Rossi, who had a promising uh, rookie year last year. Does he take another step this year? Uh, maybe he centers that Kaprizov Boldy line and they all kind of take off together. That's definitely a possibility. You got Brock Faber, who had a terrific rookie season. Can he take another step this year? Maybe facilitate some more offense for the Wild overall. Definitely, I see some potential for some other players on Minnesota to take a step and that to kind of be a rising tide that lifts all boats uh, and specifically lifts Boldy's boat to, uh, yeah, just another level that I don't even have projected here. So that's the way that I see it. I just think that Boldy, in terms of the underlying stats, really shows out. And if he kind of improves his efficiency, where I do think it's possible for him to do that, that's uh, ways that we've seen other players be able to improve their efficiencies over their careers. I think people forget how young this player is, right? This is a 23-year-old player, just turned 23 in April of this year. Really young player. Don't think by any stretch we've seen his best hockey. So I do think that there's a real chance that Matt Boldy takes a step beyond this 83 points that I'm looking at for this season. If everything does break right, if the Wild have a terrific season, if Kaprizov hits the projection that I've got on him. Uh, there's multiple ways that I think Boldy could threaten 100 points as soon as this season. All right. That's the eight players that I had. Who did I miss? I'm sure you people listening and watching have some ideas. Uh, give me some comments. You can comment on the YouTube video here. I've been providing some graphics. So if you're listening just on Spotify, you should definitely come over to YouTube and check it out. Um, provided some graphics there, some stuff to look at. But also you can provide your comments. Uh, you can also comment on Spotify now on podcasts. So you could do that as well. And I can see those there. But if there's a player that you think has a chance to threaten 100 points this year that I didn't mention, I'd love to hear about it. Let me know. And we can we can uh, get excited about the potential of some of these players for our fantasy teams this year. 
Uh, before I go, I do want to mention that we are giving away some Dauber Hockey Ultimate Fantasy Packs. They've given us a whole bunch of these to give away. So I've got five to give away uh, as part of this particular video slash podcast. Uh, really all I'm looking for uh, in terms of an entry to be entered into this giveaway is I'd ask that you subscribe on YouTube and you dm me a screenshot you can dm me either by joining the apples in chino's discord server there's always a link in every single show description uh, whether it's on youtube or it's on your podcast uh, provider there's always a link to the discord server in there so hop in the discord server you can find me and shoot me a dm with that screenshot of your youtube subscription and you'll be entered into the Dauber Hockey Ultimate Fantasy Pack giveaway. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter or X. That's at Apples Genos. You can find me there. Send me a DM there. Um, you can comment on this video if you're having trouble figuring that out. And I can definitely help you figure, figure it out. And we'll get you entered one way or another. Uh, lastly, before I go, do check out the Discord we have best ball slow drafts happening now. We just filled the seventh one. We just started on Tuesday, and we've we've filled seven uh, paid best ball slow drafts. So if you want to be a part of a Discord server where you can fill seven paid leagues in what's that? Uh, I'm recording this here on Thursday evening, so three days. Seven paid leagues filled in three days in our Discord Discord server. If you're interested in checking out a best ball format where you just draft, the computer does the rest of it for you the whole season. You just do the draft. Uh, check out that format. We're doing $5 entry fees there. Uh, I don't take any part of that. I'm just providing it as a service to the community. So, uh, yeah, basically you have a chance to win uh, some money there as well, obviously, if you do manage to take it down. But it's definitely a great way to get back into drafting and to have a little stake in it as well. You know, the mock drafts are one thing, but some people are trying some crazy things out in some mock drafts. And maybe it's not always the best representation in these best ball slow drafts. You've got really sharp managers and people who are taking it serious because they've got their own money on the line. So definitely check that out. If you're interested in more of my projections, um, my projections are a Patreon exclusive thing right now until September 1st when they'll be released to the general public. Uh, I'm actually getting pretty close to the end. Uh, I think I've got six more teams to be done. So if you're interested in seeing my projections for the upcoming season, then you can go to the Patreon for Apples and Geos. Again, link in the show description and you'll be able to check those out there. Uh, it's yeah, right now it's summer. I've got a special on it's a dollar fifty Canadian for you to join the Patreon, you know, for the next uh, month and a little bit here and you'll get uh, exclusive access to my early projections there. So if that's something that you're into, if you need, you know, some projections to do your best ball slow drafts off of, uh, then I'm providing that in the Patreon for a buck fifty a month. All right, we're getting to the end here. If this helped you in any way, really the best way, not only to support this channel, but any content creator that you appreciate, the best way to support them is to like every single video, every single podcast, to rate them, to review them, subscribe, you know, leave comments. All that stuff really does help. It's the single best way you can support your favorite content creators, and we are no exception. So if that's something you'd be able to do, we'd greatly appreciate it, but that's going to be all that I've got for this episode. Hopefully it brought you some value, helped you get a little bit better at fantasy hockey today. Uh, many thanks to the band there, there for supplying music for the podcast. Be sure to check out their Spotify as well. And that's going to be it folks. Much love. Hey.